it's, it's really hard to say what community is um, because I feel like community is our own. The, they have the ability to pivot into finding whatever a need is. It could be a, a small school that's not known. It could be a single family. It could be a single person. If there is a need and it's vocalized, sometimes it's not vocalized. Sometimes Lee or Dustin to see somebody like, you need this here. It's, that's what community is. But I think more than anything, when I think of community, especially in this current environment that we're in, I think of safety. There's just so much um, that has attacked us specifically that caused us to feel unsafe in our own spaces. Growing up, all I saw was everybody in my neighborhood giving back. My grandma, she was a big mama in the neighborhood. And just seeing how she moved, how my grandfather moved, and how like my dad and everybody just looked out for it. Um, everyone, their friends, and just gave back. It was essentially instilled into me to where this was going to be like my path. Raising a young black man, it does take a village. It takes love. It takes um, everybody involved. You know, your your parents, your aunties, uncles, cousins, everybody to um, expose them to different, just different elements of life. What drew me a little uh, more to New York was the conversations my grandfather and I used to have a lot when I was younger. And then just walking the streets with all the things that my grandfather like put into like my head when I was younger, you just feeling that energy there and just like, you, you feel like you're walking with your ancestors. It wasn't until Tamir Rice was murdered. It was just something about that, that this, you know, I can't take this no more. I went into I think it was like a CVS or Dewey Reed or something like that right there on the corner, bought a poster board and went back to the crib and just started jotting down like this ideas on how I could like pour back into the community. But I remember I just finished um, reading a uh, autobiography, autobiography of Malcolm X um, by Alex Haley. And while reading throughout the book, I'm noticing like the same two words, um, our own, our own this, our own that, our own this. But once I start putting down nutrition, education, uh, travel components, and all these ideas and concepts that I wanted to incorporate into this brand, it just fit. And right there, just one of those moments like, oh, this works. I wrote at the very top of the poster board, this our own. Seemed like going to New York shaped him uh, in a different way, learning different things. So when he came back, um, he had a whole different insight on life and uh, everything that he's doing now. The first idea that I figured out that may work was the first thing that actually changed me, which was food. That allowed me to like, well, if I get a bus, that might actually work. How do you take a charter bus or a transit bus or something like that and gut it out and convert it into something that's aesthetically pleasing and cool? After I came up with this concept of seeding soil and a bus and nutrition education on wheels, essentially, it's time to start raising some money. Dustin connected with YC by using our storefront a few years ago. He came and rented the space out for, I think it was one of his very first events for our own. The day of the event and the fundraiser, people were coming in, they're donating. And then I started talking to Lee, telling him about like this bus concept. And I think I hit Tasha probably like the next day or a couple of days later, like, do you know anybody? Like, or do you think like Lee could kind of like help? I connected Lee and Dustin when Dustin was looking for someone to help him with the project. He needed someone that was creative and that was very hands-on. And the first person that came to mind was Lee. Got a chance to learn a little bit more about what he was doing. And we had a chance to work on his first project, which was the purchase of a 50-foot transit bus. He looked at it and it's like, now his mind is doing what his mind does. It's all over the place. This is thinking of the possibilities. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna take you on. The more that we kind of worked together on the bus and built it out, the more we became friends. And I was able to um, understand kind of what his vision was for our own. He helped build out this uh, design and we just started going back and forth. But what I saw also within Lee is he's actually showing up and he's actually doing manual labor with me. At that point, I realized that this is something that I want to tap into because I think I can add more to the vision and make it bigger than either one of us could even quantify. I found out that Dustin bought a bus uh, and, and you know outfitted the bus and said, hey, I'm, I'm gonna do something with this bus to, to, to really engage with the community. And you know, when I've, 
I've bought a car before. I've done things like that, but a bus, like what? Like I've never, never in my life, uh, uh, what I think that myself or anybody would just go out and, and, and do something like that in order to kind of make a difference in their community. When I first saw the beginning stages of our own, um, I just felt very proud and just very excited to see where this was going. It wasn't common that I would meet another entrepreneur whose journey, whose mission was as intentional as Lee and Dustin. These two young black men are creating this bus that provides produce to the community that already let me know that they were two unique individuals. Our own is very different from any nonprofit that I've ever known. Um, I've never heard of the multifaceted aspects um, that non that a nonprofit can contribute like all under one roof. Uh, working in the corporate social responsibility space, um, I was in a place in my career where I felt like the position that I was in wasn't doing enough for my communities. I think our own stuck out to me. Like, I think I was literally on Instagram just looking for like black led community organizations, but I was looking for an organization that was doing something different. I discovered our own um, at a Juneteenth event. The biggest thing that stood out to me about our own is the authentic relationship that the team has. I think the fact that you're not just in the community, you're of the community. That makes a difference because people can come into the community, but that doesn't mean that they actually hold the love and the respect and the care for the community. Um, really having those one-on-one -on -one connections and relationships go so far um, and go deep when Lee and Dustin kind of came with this idea of launching wellness hubs and being able to share the impact um, of mental health and the struggle behind it. And quite honestly, the stigma of what's happening in our black and brown communities and not having that safe space to be able to connect with one another. We are never trying to come in and say that there's a cookie cutter way to be able to engage with our philanthropy team. We're really trying to lean on our partners to understand like what is it that we need and how can we be a unique partner to help fill that. In order to pour into them, we have to realize like, well, kids are in school 180 plus days throughout the year, six to eight hours a day. So when Lee and I was like just brainstorming on how to provide a solution is to build a space for these kids in the school. Teaching students in underserved communities has been really rewarding. I went to school in Inglewood as a youth, and so I really wanted to come back just to give back. The type of students that we have at City Honors are honor students that are really grinding and trying to, to achieve their academic goals at a faster pace um, than a typical comprehensive school. I think it'd be this wellness space would be important for educators because it gives them an opportunity to have another resource, uh, something else to pour and give back to the kids. Um, because again, the teachers and educators are overworked, underpaid, tired, exhausted, but they're still showing up every day to give to the kids. Some of the challenges that I've faced in the Inglewood Unified School District as an educator has been the takeover by the state. And being in state receivership means that there's more oversight. There's also a depletion of students. There could be fewer resources in certain areas. Even morale has dwindled. I think it's difficult because of the, the stigmas that exist in our society. Um, so many people have adapted to this notion that, um, that if you're, if there's issues with your mental health, that means that you're crazy or that your brain is broken or that something is wrong with you. But in reality, all of us need help. All of us need support. If you ever have, if you've ever talked to a friend about a challenge that you're facing, right? You're talking to someone. Testing is taking a forefront and students are just falling behind year after year. When you think about the school system, you know it's an institution and, and, and how you grew up and what you know is what you know. So this is again, reimagining something. What if while I was in school, I had a place where I could unwind? 